I think, folks, this will be a good time to revisit the events in Ferguson. Uh, I'm going to read off what I posted over on Facebook a little over a week ago, uh, even before the Chauvin uh, verdict. And this will be a good debunking of some of the nonsense coming out of Old Fart Rance's pie hole on this issue and other people uh, like Stan, that toady divorcee, Stan Cedar et al. Here's what I wrote. And this is about Ferguson. I think with the continuing saga of George Fentanyl, I mean George Floyd going on now where Derek Chauvin is on trial for murder, it's good to revisit the Michael Brown fiasco in Ferguson, Missouri. What killed Michael Brown? I urge you to watch that documentary uh, done by Shelby and Eli Steele. You can watch it over at SalemNow.com. I left a link for that. Very good documentary. The Obongo administration, and Eric Holder in particular, went to Ferguson to gin up a community full of drug addicts. And actually, it's not as bad. If you watch Steele's documentary, Ferguson's not as bad as portrayed. There's a middle class uh, group of blacks there. However, there are a lot of problems still. But uh, if it continues, the, those middle class blacks and whites will leave. And it is, population is declining. The Obongo administration, Eric Holder in particular, went to Ferguson to gin up a community full of drug addicts, fatherless children, and violence, and use that to stoke the fires of racial division and hate. They tried to use this to get their way. This is why phrases like, burn this bleep down, were uttered after the justifiable homicide of Michael Brown. They wanted to bring everyone else to heal or burn buildings. What else would you expect from drug addicts and fatherless children? Ferguson City, Missouri is overwhelmingly African-American and people are leaving. This is the template for a lot of cities like this. Productive folks of all colors are packing their bags and going elsewhere. They used to have a white mayor and that was the case when Brown was shot. Their city council is a lot more diverse today and they have an African-American female mayor. So everything should be kosher, right? The police chief at the time of the Michael Brown incident was white. His successor was black and the current chief is black. The interim chief between Moss and Jackson was white. According to the Missouri State Highway Patrol, from 2008 to 2013, there were 14 criminal hom homicides in Ferguson, a city of around 21,000 people. That has a sky high homicide slash criminal murder rate of 11.064 per 100,000, well above the national average. In 2016, they had nine criminal homicides, according to Missouri State Highway Patrol. In 2017, it was 10. In 2018, it was one. The FBI gives these totals for 2016 through 2019, nine, 11, two, and four. That is akin to a war zone and a homicide rate of 31.389 per 100,000. It's not getting any better in Ferguson. I have all the links for that. Violent crime has steadily increased in Ferguson since the mid 1980s. It has been quite a dangerous community, St. Louis City and, and its metro area, maybe the most dangerous metro area in the U.S. It has been a, quite a dangerous community for a long time, and the shooting of Michael Brown was an opportunity for them to blame everyone else for their problems. When their problems can be drilled down to drugs and fatherless children the vast majority of the time, Shelby Steele makes this point during his documentary on Michael Brown. It's not getting better in Ferguson or the Leviathan, a.k.a. St. Louis, that surrounds them. School district data wasn't as bad as I figured it would be, especially when you compare it with train wrecks like Flint, St. Louis, or East St. Louis. Incidentally, Mr. Seal said he was pleasantly surprised at how nice Ferguson was after visiting East St. Louis again. He thought they would be similar. They were not. Ferguson, as I already mentioned, has some middle-class black folks, and the Michael Brown fiasco did not help them one iota. One third of all households with children in public schools are on food stamps in Ferguson. 55% of the households with children in public school are single parent and only 9% of them are out of the labor force. So more than 90% of them are working, a good sign. It's a lot worse in places like East St. Louis and Flint. The high school there is predominantly black and the entire student body gets free or reduced lunch. I would wager it's been that way a long time. Five-year graduation rates in Ferguson, Florissant, Florissant, if I'm pronouncing that right, I didn't even look it up, I don't care. Five-year graduation rates in Ferguson typically lag way behind the average across the Show Me State. From 2012 to 2019, the average was only 78%. That's five years. The five-year graduation rate for African-Americans in the same time frame was 78.55%. 
more than one in five students for you Democrats reading this, does not finish high school in five years. A dropout rate, and this would be the event dropout rate, I presume, not status dropout rate. The event dropout rate gives us a bit of encouraging news. From 2011 to 2020, it was only 4.25%. However, this is also higher than the statewide average. I've seen districts much, much worse. If you want more data going back further for dropout rates in Missouri, I have the link for that if you want to go back years and years. In closing, Ferguson has a lot of problems, and one of them is not the shooting of Michael Brown, a thug who unfortunately brought a fist to a gunfight. He was not shot in the back with his hands up as a false narrative concocted by Black Lives Matter activists and their willing accomplices, accomplices in the antique media and the Obongo administration. Eric Holder willingly and knowingly lied until later when he had to recant. He tried to use these events to further his agenda. His second report, which Steele talks about, was the one where that was damage control. The second report to come out of the Justice Department after the one by the FBI. Rachel Mandel lied, as did many talking heads in the antique media. Al Sharpton surprisingly lied. Michael Brown's grandfather, father, and mother were duped. So are many of Ferguson's citizens. I was amazed from Steele's documentary and how many false and fabricated stories were vomited forth after this event in an effort to smear the mayor, the police, and Officer Wilson. Holder did not even invite Ferguson's mayor to a, discuss to a discussion about this, but he did invite mayors from nearby towns who are African American. Ferguson is a city with a long history of homicide, fatherless households, and a school district that underperforms. School choice would help. But don't expect Obama, who never attended a public school, to do that. The school district has radically improved over the past 20 plus years, but it was so bad back then there was basically no place to go but up. Until Ferguson's citizens, and you know who you are, quit being irresponsible by, by abusing and using drugs and siring children with no male role model, it will continue the revolving door of violent crime. I urge you to watch Mr. Steele's documentary. It is an eye-opener for the black community and focuses a lot more than just the events in Ferguson, but a plethora of events in American history that helped shape the narrative that was used and abused after Mr. Brown was fatally shot by Darren Wilson. I should mention one more thing. The store where this chain of events started, where Brown stole something he refused to pay for and assaulted the store owner. Black Lives Matter and their parasites made all kinds of ridiculous demands to this man. He had nothing to do with Mr. Brown's demise or his poor choices and choices in life. By the way, Brown attended four high schools in four years. At one point, they demanded the store be handed over to them, a store that this man had worked long hours for many years to build up. They had no stake in it, never worked for it, but for some insane reason, they thought they were owed it. This is their mindset, and it will only ruin the lives of their followers as they literally expect to be slaves to welfare and the soft bigotry of low expectations. Have a nice day, and I'll close with some comments, something I did earlier on some of the Idiotic comments on Old Fart Rance's video. See the links underneath the video. To polish this off, just a few comments from Old Fart Rance's uh, video where he flaps his dentures about uh, Ferguson, America's toilet, uh, and how stupid and wrong he was. He decided what the verdict was long before he even knew anything was going on. The officer had no right to shoot an unar unarmed man six times. Uh, this goes back to, and Old Fart Rance, of course, just goes along with this. Uh, I've refuted this in a video. I'll leave a link down there. He said, cops don't have the right to shoot someone unless they're armed and trying to kill them. Well, uh, I'll link to that video where I totally demolish his argument. Uh, one of the most retarded arguments uh, I've ever heard. Right now you're seeing the screenshots go by for his stupidity. He also said, there are other witnesses, including a woman who was within 20 feet of the killing and saw it all. Well, if she was within 20 feet of the killing, you know what she saw, Dave? She saw Michael Brown charge Darren Wilson. She saw Darren Wilson retreat several feet, about a quarter of a city block. <laughs> so obviously, Dave, I think what your problem is, is you need to wait for the dust to settle on stuff, but you're so codependent like Stan Cedar. Uh, you've both been divorced a bunch of times, so uh, I don't know if you're narcissistic I think you're just stupid, uh, but you're so codependent, you need people to think, oh, look at me, I'm Dave, I'm Dave, and I got another video out, and I'm really, really smart, and I'm right on top of the, the, 
d- d- pop culture and you should listen to me. I'm Dave and I got a lot of free time. No, Dave, you're an idiot. So any woman who was within 20 feet of uh, those events saw Michael Brown charge Darren Wilson, saw Darren Wilson tell him repeatedly to get on the ground, and saw Darren Wilson uh, repeatedly shoot him in the front. Hands up, don't shoot was a lie. Idiot. Why don't, here he says another one, why don't you do a video live from Ferguson and prove what you say? Well, I don't know if the guy lives in Ferguson. I think your uh, Shelby Steele's video, I, or documentary, I do urge you watch that. I was surprised. I thought Ferguson would look be as bad as East St. Louis. When I looked at the data, it's not nearly as bad. It's not exactly the greatest place in America to live. But he talks about there's some middle class blacks there. And uh, if it keeps going the way it's going, they're going to leave. Middle class black people will leave. Guess where else middle class black people have left? Uh, Detroit, uh, Baltimore, uh, Flint. Huh? Am I ringing any bells, dummy? You dumbass. Camden, Newark, middle class and upper middle class black people are leaving those places. Another one. Uh, This made him think about Kent State. Not even close. Not even close. Comparing the Michael Brown, Darren Wilson fiasco to Kent State would be like comparing a supernova explosion with a gnat fart. Idiot. And then here's another one, one of his guys. If I went through all the old Fart Rants' videos, I could find progressives saying things that they would totally disagree with now. I've seen comments on Facebook in which people are saying a National Guard should be called in there. Well, guess who wanted to call in the National Guard in riots uh, before the 2020 election due to riots? Uh, Tom Cotton. And guess who had an autistic fit over that? Uh, most Democrats. And guess who's uh, turned uh, Washington, D.C. into what looks like a... Uh, <laughs> It's, it, the only thing they're missing in Washington, D.C. now is a reviewing stand for somebody to throw flowers at Joe Biden. President select Biden. Here's one last comment. It doesn't matter what he did before he was shot. Eh, yes and no. He pie faced and assaulted the store owner. Cops do not have to kill people to arrest them. True. But when the guy doesn't want to be arrested and he's made sure he's put himself in a position where he's not going to be arrested. And uh, where he's big enough, if he gets a hold of the officer, he could overpower him and kill him, then yes. They are not judge, jury, and executioner. You're right, they're not judge and they're not jury, but they can be executioner if they literally think their life's in danger. For example, Dave, I'll give you an example even your uh, tiny brain pan can follow. This is a hypothetical, so don't have an autistic fit, old man. Let's say one punk... An unarmed punk tries to assault me on my property, and he's standoffish and refuses to leave. I'll kick his ass. Okay? Now, let's say there's three, uh, people, they don't even have to be armed. Let's say there's three, uh, young people, let's say the early 20s thugs come on my property to assault me. Guess what? I can't beat three of them at the same time. I'm not their judge, and I'm not their jury, but I'll be their you-know-what. Again, Again, folks, see the link underneath, links underneath the video. That's plenty more information. I debunked him on this Clive and Bundy stuff, too. He went absolutely bonkers about that. And he uh, should have waited for the smoke to clear on that one, too, but he didn't. So, Dave, what you need to understand, dummy, is Michael Brown could, uh, he was a big enough boy that uh, there's a lot of people that couldn't handle him one-on-one with no weapons. You need to understand this, Dave. I don't know if you're just brain damaged or what the deal is, or, or you're so maniacal because you're trying to collect, can't even talk, protect your idiotic philosophy on life, that there's a lot of people who could kill another human being and they don't need a weapon. Uh, so uh, a gun, in a lot of cases, uh, it levels the field, if you get what I mean. So you need to understand that. And I don't know if it's because you're stupid, and I'm sure you're not very bright. Uh, I'm sure your IQ hovers around room temperature. You need to understand that. So... I'm going to go with, I just think you're, you're, you're not very bright. Uh, you weren't taught how to think. You were taught what to think for whatever level of education you accidentally obtained. But I digress.